Yes, my name is Ernest Miles. I've been in the system since 1977, but prior to that, I was in martial arts since 1967. I was in Kung Fu, Aikido, and Judo. And there was something always missing in my martial art. I studied with a lot of great people, like Wilbur Majette, who came out of Aaron Banks. I studied with uh, people like uh, uh, old sensei students uh, in, in the Japanese arts. I studied with uh, people like such as Kareem Abdullah from Northern Nigeria at the K system. However, they were a good system, but what what was missing was a special ingredient. Like you can have make a stew, and if you leave the salt out, it doesn't have the right flavor. It wasn't until I saw Dr. Moses Powell in 1977 that I became very astute and very sharp, and it became the icing on the cake. And he was he finalized not only my martial art, but most martial artists, because most martial artists were in other systems. And by being in other systems, they had to go to the finisher. And the only one who could finish the system or to refine the system or take it to the next level was Dr. Moses Powell. Uh, this is not to take away from any other instructor that I may have had, not to say that, that they, they weren't great. However, Dr. Powell was, was the ultimate. He was the king of the mountain. And uh, Suki Lil John, on Sundays at 554 Atlantic Avenue, used to come over and study with us. The funny thing about it, my coming out of cases, I was, a, I was a serious karate man, very serious. I was a hard fighter. But then I learned something. When I came against uh, Lil John, uh, he was strong, so I went and tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and punch for punch. And I, I found that, that uh, I had to yield to him. No matter how great my strikes and punches were, they were meaningless. So therefore, if you come against steel and you're cotton, what can you do? And I found that, that no matter how strong I thought I was, I was weak. Moses always told me uh, about stop being so hard. But I think the definitive uh, answer in changing my system was Lil John. And that was on the weekend. He would come over to Brooklyn, 554. I came from Jersey. I'm originally from New, uh, uh, Jersey City. And in so doing, I, I got my training from Dr. Powell. But when Lou John came over on Sundays, he would, he would, be, he would just naturally be a, a, a steel, a piece of iron, whatever. And, and if you went toe-to-toe -to -toe him, you would lose. Naturally, he'd never yield no more power than he, than he had to. I yield all my power and couldn't compete with him. He was much more superior than back then in 1977 as, he's, as he is today. There was no difference. His power is still inside him. And I always have the utmost respect for him and Dr. Powell and others. In Sanukis, or in any art, there's always a Tory and the Uki. When Dr. Powell calls somebody out, the person he foremost called out was Suki Lord John. Uh, it's not to say that he hasn't used any other person or he favored Lord John more than anybody else because he knew the different movements. It was just that it was a, a, a sense of poetry being written. And in the, in the writing of Dr. Powell and Lord John was that there was a flow, there was a communication. It was the best uh, work in motion you can ever see between Dr. Powell and Suki Lord John. Dr. Powell was so tricky in his movements, one of the greatest masters who ever come out of it was, or it still is, Suki Lo John. No matter what, whether it be on a mat, hard floor, anything else. And Suki Lo John never was reluctant to take any kind of falls or any kind of uh, way Dr. Powell uh, may have thrown him. The training at the time, as well as the day, was so intense it can compete with any kind of military system in any part of the world. It was so intense that People were, in fact, becoming an iron machine. But not only iron, but they were flexible in their movement. See, you can't be steel and be, and be uh, able to be soft at the same time. You gotta be flexible, agile, and uh, on point. It's almost a contradiction between uh, being agile and being steel at the same time. Dr. Powell showed how to flow in motion, be part of a rhythm, and to be steel at the same time. And this is what people didn't understand about Dr. Powell. His hand movement was so unique that if you didn't catch it, you just didn't see it. I came from four different martial arts systems. And in so doing is that I would watch Dr. Powell, I would watch Lil John in their taking of the martial art. No matter what martial art you may have come from, you could not pick up Dr. Powell's system 
unless you was at his school. You, you can say you're from Judo, Karate, or Kung Fu. You would not see the foot movements or the movement unless you were a part of the system. I don't care how great you are. You had, to, you had to be in it. If you didn't come from the mud of Dr. Powell, you didn't exist. And that's essentially what happens. You have to be uh, essentially part of uh, the system to understand it. And it would make anybody and everybody ten times better than what they are or were. A lot of times, martial arts start off with the physical. We always want to be hard. We always want to protect ourselves. We always want to show our weight. And we always want to be like the stronger bull compared to another bull. However, the highest realm or the highest point of studying the martial art is spirituality. And that's the key or the chi. Without the key or chi, you cannot achieve. What most people try to do is, what slows them down is the physical. If you want to ever be a, want to be a great martial artist, it's to practice soft. Soft a thousand times. It takes a thousand times to learn it. It takes 10,000 times to master it. If you practice soft every day, all your power will come to you. And I think this is the secret uh, to Grandmaster Moses Powell and Sukkot Lola John. I think they practice it very soft every day, a thousand times, repetition. And in so doing, they became uh, knowledgeable. And ten, at the 10,000th time of, of doing it, they became a master. People don't understand what a master is. A lot of times people start off rigid, hard, and their stuff become very slow. If it's not a flowing or a rhythmical in their motion, uh, they will never get the essence of the true essence of the spirituality. Now, Dr. Powell himself could have gone any place in the world. They always said he want, they want him in certain countries and stuff. I, I asked him one question, I said, I heard that you want you in Japan to study his art. He laughed at me. So why would I go over there? Dr. Powell was so unique, he was a, an encyclopedia unto himself, that everything evolved from him because he, he had seen it all. And if there's anything uh, uh, great in Dr. Powell that in this day and time, has to be a Soki Lord John. The status of Sanook is that there's only one Sanook, it's because there's only one Dr. Powell. And uh, all of us come from uh, many, many different uh, walks of life to be part of that suit. Now, there is controversy within the system. But what has to do is there has to be a offense that has to be mended. And what I mean by mended is that Suki John, you cannot cut him out, you cannot delete him. He will always be a part of the system. And I'm talking about from the head down. He has to, he has to be uh, acknowledged. It's like uh, having a life without breathing. Uh, you cannot be, have, be a part of life without breathing. Uh, to, to have him deleted out of anything is, is death, because you, you're, cutting out, you're cutting off your own air. And, and if anybody has knowledge or wisdom, he has to go to the well. Now, if, you, I don't go to, if I don't go to him for his advice or for his knowledge, then where do I go? And, and he's always going to be, uh, uh, to use the superlative, uh, the greatest. I think the, the attack on, on, on uh, Sugi Lojan should be uh, considered frivolous. Because to say that he's not Sanukas is to say there's no Dr. Powell. And I think, I think, I think they should be, I think the, those people who are attacking him should take another look at it and, and, and talk to him and try to mend the fence as much as they can. And there needs to be a, a bridge. There should be only one family. Now that the father is no longer here, what do we do? Well, we're very chaotic. There shouldn't be no chaos whatsoever. I have to smile at that because the word cosmopolitan comes into mind. A cosmopolitan person is someone who's a citizen of the world. And if Suki Lujan has traveled all around the world, who is more cosmopolitan and to, to bring an olive leaf to anybody and everybody to mending the fence than Suki Lujan? And that's why I leave it like that. I leave it uh, in, that, in those terms. Mm. Mm. Thank you. My name is Hassan Khalid Title Soke. Um, I've been training some 40 something odd years. Uh, I started training in 1961. Uh, my involvement with Sanukas really started early on in um, the early 70s after returning from Vietnam. Um, I'm the founder of a system called Kuroshi Do, and right now it has evolved into uh, what is termed as being the evolution of that system, which is Kuroshi Kai Jitsu Karate Do. Um, I say it to you that way because it's always about what you bring to life by evolution.
you know, each and every person will always be able to evolve into something that they were not originally. And so my martial art has taken that term, that term as well. Um, for me to be, think about my karate being separate from my jujitsu, being separate from my, uh, my weapons training or anything like that would be wrong. But most of all of that was focused when I came into Sanukas. Uh, Sanukas has been a backbone of my life. Uh, I've always thought of Dr. Moses Powell as being my martial art father. Um, inside of training, the many years that I've trained with him, and the many places that I've trained with him, I've seen him evolve as well. And so much has been learned from him throughout those years. My involvement was first with Supreme Grand Master Dr. Moses Powell. Uh, I started training with him first because he was the first person to really give my karate training the blessings of being able to turn into a system. Um, at that time in the early 70s, everybody was very much one style or another. Uh, the eclectic part wasn't really as popular as it is now with people doing more than one discipline. And um, the mastery around it was so many great masters back in that day. Um, to be able to train with Dr. Powell was just an honor to just to be in the same school with him. Uh, in Bronzeville, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York is where I first met him. And inside of that, that you know, his training from there was down Atlantic Avenue. And many places that, you know, that he went around to. One unique part about his, his training was he always was the person who would bring it to you. You wouldn't necessarily have to always go to the school. You know, wherever Doc was, there was training there. And so he always made you feel like family. Uh, that's why I, I, I appreciate so much of his training to this day. So my first encounter was with him. But it wasn't too far behind before you met Soka Little John. Soka Little John was always there, always in the picture, uh, being one of his number one fighters at the time, uh, being one of those people who always was a pioneer uh, in taking him uh, martial art to the next level. So at the time, those are the only two people that I knew that was Sanukas, those two people, Dr. Powell and Soka Little John. There's so many other people around at the time, Pedro and um, um, Professor Battle, uh, some people that we know now today and some of the C's. But um, uh, my first encounter was Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you know, it, it, when we talk about a Doc never leaving us or being with us, you really felt it now as it was last year and as so many. This is like taking a pilgrimage to come here. Um, when we're here, we share so much uh, with each other throughout the year. It's only one day out of the year when we come down here. It's a weekend. The spirit in the room is always a blessed one. Uh, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad set up a beautiful seminar in the way that he allowed all the instructors to be able to share their pieces of Sanukas, their pieces of Kamit Deiru, their pieces of the fame. VSK. Those initials stood for Vijitsu, Sanukas Rule, and Kamite Rule. And basically, without giving one more credit than the other, it made everyone come together as family. And when we looked at the doctor and the doc left us, that's what he left us with. He left us with that ability to be able to put things together. One of his favorite expressions was, take this and put it with what you know to make it better. So, you know, if we sort of look at the root of what Doc was putting out when he said each one, teach one, those things come together when we come to a weekend like this. You know, you feel the spirit in the room, you understand that the piece is coming together. To me, that's really the, the evolution of Sanukas. What we come to when we come to these events and what we feel. Um, I believe that there's no one person that can really say that they know Sanukas rule. I believe that there's all Doc intentionally left the pieces with many of us and only when we come together on weekends like this that Sanukas is really being practiced. You know, there's a thing about being nourished, you know, um, and being fed. Um, the substance that you get to grow, you know, you can eat junk food and you can feel nourished, but there's a time in your life where you just don't grow from it. You don't grow from those things. You don't grow from the things that don't have substance. When you're at these seminars, you feel a substance from the time you walk in the door. You know, we, we think of martial arts as three different entities, mind, body, and spirit. When you come to these weekends that we have down here in Florida, or whenever the family comes together, we always feel like we are really being nourished on all three levels. Doc, as well as Soka Little John, never ever gives us a p one piece of that. When we walk in there, it's mind, it's body, and it's spirit, being nourished at one time. You you, you nourish the complete martial artist. And uh, for those that weren't here, 
there's a, a, a you should feel a sense of malnutrition, so to speak. You know, if I can just stay in that 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 well. And and with that being, you know, you you gotta, as Doc would say, you gotta go to the well. You know, you gotta come back to where all the substance is, where all the nutrition is. And uh, it's being fed here over and over again and, be, and helping people evolve into better people. So Lucas is, you know, is, is constantly evolving. Um, I tend to think that we just have to hold ourselves inside the, the frame of mind of understanding that we have to get through it. You know, we've been taught that life is a battle on an everyday basis. You know, that's the real war. That's the real uh, urban environment. You know, Doc would say, you know, you can hold a job and you can get back home and support your family, then you won the battle for the day. You know, you don't always have to be attacked in the street. So um, there's a lot of controversy going on, people saying some ill fated things, but um, you know, that's the battle. We're here to fight it. We're here to win it. And uh, no one can take uh, away the credit for the people who have put down the science and have put down the, the knowledge the way that our teachers have given it to us. There's always going to be a challenge. Uh, I, don't, I believe if anybody is thinking that there's not going to be a challenge in the next 10 years, then they're wrong. But the boys that are here that's left, I believe that each and every one of them is doing their job to make sure that we get through. I just say that you know, if you know anything about Sanukas, just go back to his code, eye to eye, heart to heart. If you have a problem, so a little John here tell you, bring it eye to eye. You know, if you can't look a man in his eye and tell him about the problems that you're having, if you can't settle down and note your family and bring it back heart to heart, there never was an original, an original intent to do any good about it. And when you don't bring good intent, then you get the consequences of that. And, you know, I don't want to speak in parables to the sense of saying that uh, I don't understand what's going on. It's just that I do know that it's a battle. And I know that we're on the forefront of doing what we have to do. You know, my mission has always been to do family. You know, I feel that any place that the name Sanukas is at, I feel the right to be there and to be able to bring what I feel what was left with me is the ability to bring people together. And um, that's my mission. So John is doing his mission on a daily basis. Uh, you know, just celebrating her birthday, didn't have to be here, didn't have to be doing this, but remembered he could bring the family together so that we can break bread and know that we, no days are promised to us. You know, we're living in a time that doesn't allow us to be able to separate ourselves from the original intent of bringing future warriors up to understand what it is to be a Sanukas for a player. Thank you, sir. Let's